Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing. Boom. What's going on, guys? Samuel World from Samuel World World with Dungeon TV back with another video on this series where I talk about my favorite movies from 1996 to 2022. I've been having a blast doing this series of videos and I definitely want to finish doing this, so I, I hope you'll enjoy. I got pretty much have all the other lists for you guys want to check those out, honestly. And now let's get on with the 2010th decade, starting with 2012. I've done 2010, 2011, you guys want to check those videos out. But let's get on to about 2012, a year that I filled with so many great movies, so it definitely wasn't easy picking my favorite, but I still hope you all enjoyed this list, but not always, I would love to know. What are your favorites down below in the comment section? What are your favorites from 2012? So, what that being said, let's get started with the list, shall we? But as always, always, before we get to the actual list, let's get into the honorable, honorable, honorable mentions. And the honorable mentions are, and I mean, it was hard to leave some of these movies off the list, honestly, and that's how good this year was, so you know, just bear with me. Anyways, the honorable mentions are, Ted, Chronicle, Silent House, People Like Us, Magic Mike, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Seven Psychopaths, Flight, Rise of the Guardians, and the most painful cut on the list, Argo. I'm not sure why people don't like that Argo on the list, but again, it wasn't easy to have to leave this, some psychopaths, and the books to be a wildfire off this list, but how was people just like head off the list, so bear with me, but hope you enjoy. Anyways, again, let's get to the list, shall we? Kicking off the list at number 10, I definitely been a lot of films for number 10, so that's kind of like a last minute thing. I kept going constantly back and forth, even as I was about to film it, honestly. But in terms of films, I think I would want me watch the most, films I enjoy the most. In the end, I decided to go with with, 20, with the with the Disney animated film Wreck It Ralph. I'm going to wreck it, guys. Yeah, I decided to go with Wreck It Ralph at number ten. Honestly, a film I honestly I've always enjoyed when it first came out. I always enjoyed when I first watched it. And it's definitely kind of one of my most rewatched Disney movies. Honestly, because of that, it's a film that I always like. But I think I've grown to appreciate more on repeat viewings. Like it's a film that probably shouldn't open all the good been just like give video game reference after reference after reference because they do. Obviously, it runs a lot of video game characters and a lot of popular ones, but they do the very so way of having a guy that just doesn't want to be the bad guy. He just wants to be a hero. He wants to be celebrated as a hero. He just wants to be like poorly treated by his uh, people for honestly being a bad guy. He's like the reason why like, the. I mean, he'll. I feel bad about how they treated him, honestly. Respect for a very simple. It makes me very simple kind of kid that you want to go on this great journey for. I find that you also get a very compelling narrative, a fan relationship between him and Penelope that is very caring and very deep and very loving. You get some very interesting themes and messages told, some breathtaking animation, hilarious joke at hilarious joke, heartwarming moment after heartwarming moment, some great soundtrack, great score, pretty emotional moments, and a twist film that actually does work here. So, yeah, it has the perfect brains for an amazing Disney movie in it. Still delivers. Now, come in at number 9, we have the sci fi classic Looper. Loop, 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 Looper. This one's directed by Ryan Johnson. And well, I think he got their cover for, for it's like an under 40 director of the film Brick, which I also think is a great movie that I did watch first time, for the first time a while back. One called The Birds Bloom, which I don't think is real to see, but I think people don't really mind it either. But this was the film that pretty much put Ryan Johnson on the map. Uh, this was the one that put him on the map before, obviously, in the doing Last Jedi, which I love, but basically, a lot of people don't love it, honestly, and people are even bashing for it. And he also did the Knives Out films, which are fantastic three movies. <coughs> but for me, Looper has always been his best movie, and it still is his best movie for a good reason. It has a great time travel narrative, has a great world building to it, has a great back and forth between a lot of these characters. You also got Bruce Willis, a bunch of left loving top tier performances. Even Emily Blunt is pretty good here. You get some great back and forth, you get some insanely surprising moments, and uh, ending that would just leave you just like, wow. Again, great back and forth, great time travel that's used very effectively well here. 
And I feel like let's just add some, some, great, some great surprises and gets better upon rewatch once you know the outcome. So yeah, the breeze all except a little bit, but it still is fantastic. Now, 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 coming in at number, 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 number eight, we have Moon Rise Kingdom. Which honestly, it's in, in our top tier of Wes Anderson movies. Again, I did rewatch this movie actually this year, which my first rewatch the movie in quite a while, along with pretty much a lot of Wes Anderson movies, which again, and to pitch in for Asteroid City, I rewatched all his movies, and again, well, he's a director that I don't think everybody loves, I don't think he's a director that it's for everybody. For me, I don't think he's really made a bad movie, honestly, and for me, Moonlight's Kingdom is in his top three. Again, it's a pretty much a great coming of age movie that's just told, that while it does have a story that we've seen before, it's told in a very interesting and unique way. It's told in a very interesting way about basically being these two people that basically just go to a beach and we have people trying to find them and they end up, you know, and you get a very interesting and different romance in this movie that's really just sweet and interesting and compelling. You also got performances from Bruce Willis, Edward Norton, Bill Murray, Fred McDormand, Tillis Quinton. I think pretty much like everyone just delivers. Everyone delivers great performances. It's, it's one of the most real and interesting and out there movies. Again, it's just one from the need for yourself, but it's hard not to, lead to at least like feeling you appreciate what's going on. And it's just it's very heartwarming and compelling throughout. It has like a lot of movie has great visual style, fantastic cinematography, top notch directing, an amazing score, just perfection. Now at number seven, I definitely went out at which one was going to be on the list, but in the end, I decided to have to put number seven. That just tells you how the other six movies go. So at number seven, we have the Avengers. The Avengers assemble. Yes, I have Avengers at number seven here, which might say a lot for the other movies to get into, honestly. Because yeah, this was an amazing an event film. Like, I remember when this film came out. I remember when it was coming out and how people were like, "Oh my God, the Avengers are actually on the big screen." And for good reason, because, wow, this movie is fantastic. And it still is one of the best films in the MCU, honestly. For a film that pretty much knows what it was, honestly, well, it, it pretty much brings a lot of these characters from a lot of different movies, which is something that has not been done before. And to this day, we still see try other universes trying to match his templates. And they pretty much fail every time. Because, like, like those previous ones, the MCU actually built up to it. They actually build up to this. And seeing all the with interactions with each other, they're back and forth. It's what makes things so much fun and entertaining. We also have a compelling narrative, some really surprising moments. While keeping it pretty much Winslow as a top tier villain here. Just you know, fantastic moment after fantastic moment. Amazing action sequence after major action set piece. Like it's a true event move that still is very watchable, still very fun. And it's pretty much still one of the best films in the MCU. And the score is also very iconic, one of the best scores, pretty much period, honestly. Just, what can I say about the Avengers? It's fantastic, fun, entertaining, a great end to phase one, and still an MCU top tier movie. Now, at number six, we get to what I film, I get to it, one of the best MCU movies to one of the best horror movies that I made. Yes. At number six, we have The Cabin in the Woods. Gabin, 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 Gabin in the Woods! Yes, we have the Cabin in the Woods at number 6 here, which I'll say is one of the best horror movies out there, honestly. A again, this is a film that really surprised a lot of people because it, we actually did trailers, did some. Looks like it was going to be like a generic horror movie, but then because they were trying to hide the big twist that went on to this movie, which pretty much obviously it's very different, unique, and makes fun of a lot of the terrible horror stuff that we would see here. Which makes this movie so compelling and interesting to watch. You know, Drew is a true guy through the debut. He did a fantastic job. He also got Krista Connolly, Chris Hemsworth, and Hudson, Franz Kahn, and Bradley Woodford here, who all are great in this movie, who all are very compelling characters. And they do actually try to make the match very interesting and not just your typical like, college character. Like, they also like that at first, but at the end, they had more layers to them. The scares are great. The comedy aspect is great. It's like, Again, it's a very uniquely told movie and how it presents itself, the big twists that happen. It's just great all around. Now, at number five. Now, I don't know whether some people are going to like that I put this movie on the list at all, honestly. You'll see what I talk about in that film. At number five is The Dark Knight Rises. 
which I think is the weakest of the Dark Knight trilogy. But again, I'm throwing this on that trilogy to be probably debatably the best trilogy of all time. Like, I always go back and forth between this and the Lord of the Rings as the best trilogy of all time, honestly. But Dark Knight Rise, I think, is still a fantastic movie that has some incredibly high highs, honestly. And while I wouldn't say it's an entirely perfect movie, the experience, the emotion, the what it goes for, and all the insane moments that happen in this movie make this a true movie that has created on an emotional ride and it never lets up. The Christian Bell does his best performance as the character, his arc is fantastic, Bane is fantastically played by Tom Hardy and he does a great job, and Andreas Catwoman is amazing. Probably might have been the best trailer camp we have gotten, yes I am going that far. It's gorgeously edited, has some pretty incredible moments. Moments and even the plot holes, like I said, I think are more easily explained, honestly. And so they don't really end up bothering me that much. How much again, it's gorgeous, it's directed greatly, has great performances, fantastic answer set pieces, like the whole back brain makes the back sequence and the whole stream sequence are fantastic moments. And all around, is a prime good, a perfect ending to this trilogy. Now, for the weakest of the trilogy, but still a perfect ending. Nail. Coming at number four, we get to a film, one of the more praiseworthy movies to come out in 2012, and that is Silver Linings Playbook, which I think is one of the best romance movies of all time. And I'm pretty sure everyone definitely agree on that because man, this film is fantastic! Like, oh my god, it doesn't kind of plays that like a typical romance movie, but it does it in a more different way, or at least a more unique approach because. Because the romance that kind of, it's just where they build the romance, and the way these characters are, and the way it tells like crazy messages about like, clinical depression and violence and uh, these stuff that you wouldn't expect the romance would have a touch upon, but they do live in close point. You also got Diego Rosso, who does three actions. Does what's moving very well, honestly, and they do a great job making you care about Bradley Cooper and Jeff Lawrence, who I still agree this is Jeff Lawrence's best performance. I mean. If I'm recording, I think she won the Oscar for this movie, if I remember correctly, and honestly, I think she deserved it, because she plays the emotions so great in this movie, and she and Bradley Cooper have fantastic characters. I believe this was the, the second movie together, and three movies they've been together. But this is definitely easily the best movie. They have Tom Miller's chemistry, you know, to get some nice good surprises here, but Bradley Cooper here, some really incredible emotional sequences, and... It's one of the relationships that you really do want to get on, honestly, you know, part of my I'm happy thing, given... It, again, it's not always with the kind of cliche story, but it's heavily helped by the writing, the messaging, the directing, and the character work, which is top-notch, amazing. One of the has already been said, it is fantastic. Definitely one of those Oscar movies I think, honestly, is worth watching. Now, coming in at number, 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 number three... We have now have one of my favorite copies of all time, <laughs> and that is 21 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. What a movie. Again, now one of those movies that we are playing against what I talked about in the last video and the cover we're getting to in our list. This is a movie that honestly should not have been as good as it is. It's definitely one of the most surprising movies I have ever seen in my life. I bet you nobody expected 21 Jump Street to be as good as it was. Because obviously it's a TV adaptation of an old A's show, I think, along the same line. I believe that Johnny Depp, I remember correctly. And those were never really good sign, honestly, especially one around this time. I mean, he also got like, John Hill, who is a good actor, but he also got Channing Tatum, who around this time was known for being the rom com guy. And the trailers didn't really do much stuff that was going to be like a typical, like, oh, the school in high school, stop these drugs. Like, oh, we've seen this movie before, this is not going to be good at all. But, but the one thing that doesn't make movies stand out is that they know this movie is done before. They know this story has been done before. They know everything half movie has been done before. They decided to go with the self-aware route. And that makes it really stand out and unique. And it makes for a movie that's consistently greatly hilarious from beginning to end. A movie that I could not stop laughing my ass off from beginning to end. Smiled so much. I find that there's also the movie that people actually make I believe like this was a movie that made people take Shane Tam a lot more seriously as an actor. Because like I said, he was kind of more known as the rom-com guy during this time. I'm kind of an honest with those wasn't that great if I'm being honest. But this was that he actually can be a good actor. And he's part 
and, and, he, and he has a fantastic chemistry with John Hill from beginning to end. And they also go for really nice character arcs. But Ice Cube, Ice Cube though, is a stealer show. Ice Cube is a scene stealer in every scene that he's in. But the other are great as well. They, they go very well with the stuff world concept. While also having characters that you still do care about and give a damn about. Having some fun action bits here and there. And some really iconic comic sequences with the whole... Especially with the whole drug sequence that is still one of the most hilarious sequences in any comedy movie. Again, the fact that this movie ended up working as well as it does is still surprising. Yeah, it's one of the most consistent already comedies that we have gotten. And we end up getting a great sequel, while well, unfortunately we haven't seen got more of these movies, unfortunately. I mean, I thought it was only two movies already they probably would have gotten stale, honestly, but overall, 21 Jump Street. Fantastic. One of the most surprising movies I have ever seen in my life. Now, I did with actually between my top two for a while, actually. Like, I got this cold concept back and forth on which are these two movies will give me number one on Slay. Like, I think I have my number two of my number one for quite a while until I thought, oh, no, number one and I was like, yeah, maybe that should be number one. So, it was definitely a debate for a bit, honestly. So, in the end, I decided that my number two was going to be Skyfall, which I think is along with. Casino Royale and North Carolina Die are my top three Bond movies. That I say those are my top three Bond movies. Well, Skyfall is probably the weakest of those three movies, actually, in my opinion, but Skyfall, I think, is still a fantastic movie. That, uh, they definitely delivered after this point, Quantum of Solace that came out earlier. You know, it's fun, probably enjoying more than most people, but a lot of people didn't really like that movie, which I do understand. It's definitely not one of the best Bond movies. But Skyfall really elevated the team on with the storyline like seeing Royale and leave the tone and everything that went on. You get some top tier action like with the previous movies, and you get some really emotional stuff or some, some really emotional scenes. How about them being a top tier villain? Incredible direction, some really shocking moments that you wouldn't expect from a Bond movie. And of course, you got the actual song Skyfall, which I think is the best Bond song that we have ever gotten, in my opinion. It's an emotional ride with great action, great music, great emotional hearts. Pretty much what Enix Cinderella did, and on an even bigger scale. Again, it's probably the weakest of the my top three Bond movies, obviously, with Casino Royale and Skyfall. But Skyfall is still a phenomenal movie with, with a film that just is beautiful, heartbreaking, and has some of the best moments in any Bond movie. But now, coming in at number one, my favorite movie of 2012 is... Django Unchained. Yeah, Django Unchained, which honestly is my second favorite Queen Tarantino movie behind Pulp Fiction. And again, it's kind of like Pulp Fiction, it's kind of what you expect from Tarantino's point. This is some of his best stuff on display here. Maybe a Western movie that's very well directed, that has a very compelling narrative, has a great back and forth between a lot of these characters. And Jimmy Fox, the only one of his best performances, Crystal Waltz, and Leonardo DiCaprio stealing every single steal. Like, you got a top notch cast here, and they all deliver good like, characters with great RX and just some surprising sequences that are just. So just wow, so it's some great action, some the great sharp dialogue that you expect from Tarantino at this point. Like, like I said, I would be between this movie and Skyfall, but I'll say in terms of the ones I feel like I can come back to so much often, the ones I rewatch the most, and the ones I remember the most, so the ones I think have the most impact. I go with Jacob Unchained, honestly, because yeah, it's probably, in my opinion, the best western that we have gotten, honestly, which I know I say a lot, but. Yeah, if you've seen this movie, you know, you know it has all the great emotion, all the great hearts, all the crazy violence and insanity that you would expect from Tarantino at this point. And like, this is Tarantino, the end of some is Tarantino at his best here, honestly. His pace for your walls might be very long, it has great music, great soundtrack, track some really just bam stankly incredible moments throughout. And I don't know, it is my number one favorite movie of 2012. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed me discussing my top 10 favorite movies of 2012. Let me know down below in the comment section what are your favorite movies from this year. I would definitely love to know down below in the comment section. Yeah. I hope you all enjoyed the series so far. I'm definitely going to continue going on with you, with you guys. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Be sure to hit that 
Like, subscribe, and have ready. Be sure to let me know what your favorite is down below in the comments. I am Sam Well Will Sam Productions. I will see you next time. And as always, stay cool, everybody. Peace.